Morning guys. It's raining today, so taking the DD, DD Dacher taxi. I've got this red light on me. Red light district. Look like I'm in a bit of a seedy movie. I'm not a big fan of taking the subway when it's raining. So I tend to take a taxi. On my way to the boxing. Oh, there you go, the red light's gone now. And I usually like to take a pincher, which is uh, a shared taxi, because you get to meet new people. I've actually signed business before from <laughs> pincher. I've met business people. It does happen from time to time. And you get to practice your Chinese, that's another great way. You can meet new people. Um, if you can get anyone not, prevent them from using their phone but to talk to you, that's always a, a good win. This morning, uh, woke up around six, so a bit later than usual. I don't tend to do cardio before my boxing because I find that if you do it beforehand, you'll be wrecked for the actual session. Yesterday was a good day, another good day. Uh, didn't sign any clients, but uh, it was good for calls. I had a good call with um, a school in the UK, actually. It was a bilingual school, Chinese and English school. It was a good call with them. A lot of these schools here in China, these independent schools and universities, most of them don't do marketing very, very well, particularly in China. Um, they tend to do it on the absolute cheap when you need to invest a little bit of time and money into this. So that's one of the things that I do. I help companies set up here in China digitally. And you'll find that, I've got a bit of an Elvis look this morning. Oh, oh, oh. So there's a lot of demand right now for Chinese parents and students sending their children to study in the UK and around the world. And I have the key, I'm the gate holder to some of these schools. I know, you know, location wise, and it's not just based on academics, it's also based on the facilities, based on the staff. You know, if you've got really great teachers, that's another great seller. I had a good call with one of these companies yesterday and then I was gonna speak to, let's just say, a big hotel group in, um, I won't mention the name or the location, but this happens once in a while. It probably happens to me once every two, three months, I'd say. Is you, you schedule a call for someone and then they just don't turn up. And then there's no message beforehand, message afterwards. So I woke up this morning to check. Nothing. N no. Hey, uh, really sorry, Daniel, or afterwards. I always give people the benefit of the doubt because I, I never know what might happen. I've had in the past people say, oh, you know, someone died or some unexpected, unfortunate t chain of events happened. So I always give be people the benefit of the doubt. But in my life, I I think I can probably count on one hand or less, a couple of fingers, where that I did that to someone. Where I didn't message them beforehand, but I messaged them very soon after saying, look, so sorry this happened. Or, now we've all got stuff in our lives, but it does come down to time management. And I don't understand when someone has a phone and especially a toilet. I can't run in a toilet and quickly send a message or quickly send an email to even cancel, say, look, really sorry, can't do right now, I'll get back to you. Um, it's it's nonsense. So <laughs> I had that happen to me yesterday. It does happen once in a while, but you've got to take it on the chin. You never know what people are going through. Um, the best way to react to it is just say, hey, hope it all is okay. I'll catch up tomorrow. But all in all, yeah, yesterday was a good day. I had a, a good um, 
day of work and calls all day. I had a really good call with the UK government actually, UK um, Business and Trade Office. Um, I've never, to be fair, I've never really been a big fan of those organisations. Um, the, the kind of British organisations here in China, personally, um, are not that effective. When I, when I compare them to other nations, like the Germans do a very good job here. There's that close-knit, you know, kind of community. Um, the only one I would say that's actually doing a really good job right now is um, the British Chamber. So they're doing an, an act actually pretty good job. Uh, the one in Shanghai, you know, they're actually connecting people and companies, but unfortunately what I find with the British organisations is there's like an arrogance there, which there doesn't have to be. There needs to be, you're British, I'm British, or I'm interested in British things, I'm interested in British culture, or let's grow together, and there tends to be, I don't know why, I'm very envious of, I, I look at other nations sometimes, like, why are you guys, you guys are so close-knit and you're all loving each other, and... You know, everybody's looking after each other, and that's the way it should always be, especially with your own kind. There's a lot of division now, unfortunately. Um, it's raining again. Too bad, my love's at an end. It's raining proper, proper hard here. You know? See that? Look at that, guys. Anyway, I had a really good call with them. I think a lot of people don't really recognize um, me on the ground here in China as well. That's always a big thing. It's like, I'm British, I speak Chinese. I'm a connector. I'm one of these people that in my head, if I, if I think, if I meet someone that like, I'm looking for this, I've always got someone in my head like, okay, I can connect them with them, free connection, um, get stuff going, should be paying for referrals, but never mind. But I'm always good at that kind of thing. Like, you're looking for this, I know the right person, here you go. And I do it very quickly. But I find that most people don't think like that. Most people are just like, money, 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 money. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Hey, quick money and then see ya but I, I'm really trying to build something long term sustainable and consistent, that's why I'm doing these vlogs like it's to stay consistent, stay accountable and actually deliver results every day, day in, day out but yeah, the call yesterday with that that particular thing uh, that uh organization was good it, it, it sometimes comes down to get just having the right person it's the right right person right time um, I've been in China for nearly 10 years and I've always found that generally um, it is it comes down to timing and this lady that I you know got connected with straight away she kind of recognized the value which was good so hopefully I'll be doing more stuff with the British organizations. The biggest beef I have with the, the British, when I'm saying organization, I'll talk about NGOs. Is the big one is particularly with an offline event. This is what I'll see is there'll be an, an expo, an offline event here in China. And the staff are just sitting there doing nothing. They don't actually get out and bring people in, scan QR codes, buy, right? Buy, learn more about our company, learn more about our, our organization. You know, they'd rather just sit there on the phones all day and you're never gonna deliver value by doing that. And you know, when I do an event with someone, I get myself out there. I almost annoy people. I'm like, come on over, go lie. Yeah, yeah. Ching go lie. please come here. And uh, try and, uh, 
you know, Liao Jiaxia, try and understand more. That's what you want. You want to be almost like a door-to-door -door salesperson. You want to be bringing people over at these events. And that's always been my... When I'm at an event, I never sit down. I will stand up all day, sometimes even skip lunch, which I shouldn't do. And just, you never know, one conversation might change everything. And you usually find it's actually one of the conversations at the start of the day or at the end of the day. You always find that you'll meet that one person that might change everything. It happened to me last year with one particular event. And it, it, you just, you got to get yourself out there. And it's a really great way of dealing with rejection. Because when you go to these offline events and people are walking past a booth, it's a great way to... Um, to screen people but also you get people that will just like no or they'll just ignore you and walk on and if you're able to deal with that kind of rejection you can deal with anything this is the other thing I, I like to do when I'm in the taxi I'll, I'll speak to my driver as well because uh, I like to meet new people but also you get a bit of Chinese as well Shifu Daoshanhao uh are Anhui, oh, Huangshan. So he's from Anhui, which is um. Oh, Nietzsche Malihai. He knows. He knows I'm. He knows I'm from England. Wow. Need some of that. What's your English? You said that all English. Ah. But maybe I'm from America or Canada. <laughs> oh, he knew I was British. Wow. Ni hun tong ming. Ni qing ming jie ni hui an hui ma? Ni qing ming jie. Ni hui an hui. So it's the uh, qing ming festival, the tomb sweep sweeping festival coming up soon. And um, yeah, a lot of people will be traveling in the next week or so. So, um, yeah, he's returning to his hometown. Anhui, I like Anhui, it's very nice. People there are extremely, extremely friendly, very welcoming. It's what I call like a starey province in China. So when you go there, people will... Now why, foreigner? It's got, it's got like a quite endearing place. Whereas in Shanghai, it's like, ah, there's foreigners everywhere. <laughs> but I like going there, I feel like a bit of a celebrity when I'm there. Yeah, it's almost, ooh, they're looking at me. I don't get this in England. I don't get this in Shanghai. It's, it's nice to have people looking at me. This is, oh, this is what fame feels like. So, it's a, a highly recommended. Uh, I've never been to Hefei, but I've been to Huangshan, the Yellow Mountain. Hefei is it all? I know that I haven't been to Hefei. Oh, you're Hefei person? So I've been to the Yellow Mountain, which is the inspiration for Avatar. Avada. So uh, James Cameron, director of that movie, he saw those beautiful mountains. The mountains that are in the, it's like they're in the heavens. So they're in the in the clouds. And. Yeah, I really like it there. You like them for years? Shunian? Shunian. Shunian. No, See, it's it's not his fault. That's my Chinese. Like sometimes I was like, Oh, how long have you been in China? I'm like, ten years. And they're like, Oh last year. No, no, ten years. <laughs> so uh Shenzai will pay a vlog. Uh, <laughs> 上海也下雨很多 <laughs> So that's the thing they always think about England is it rains a lot But in Shanghai it rains a lot I think it rains just as much in Shanghai as it does in England So 
yeah, he's asking me when I last, when I was in England last, I was in England in December. England is nice, I like it. If you go to those quaint places, if you go to you know, Lake District or York, um, if you go to those nice villagey places, in proper England, that's what's nice. But London, I'm gonna sound like a moany Brit now, but London has, has lost something, has lost its edge. When I went there in December, it was it was nice to, you know, go to a London show and go to Chinatown <laughs> and go to all these places, but to actually live there, I don't know. I've never lived there. Maybe one day I need to have a crack at living there for a year. It is bloody expensive in London. Stupidly expensive for when it doesn't have to be. Whereas Shanghai, it's, it's affordable to live here. You can still live here quite cost effectively. Cheaply. But yeah, guys, try it. Next time, talk to your driver. You never know who you might meet. I've made some friends as well from Ping Cher. I haven't, I haven't today got a Ping Cher, but I've made some really good friends from... Uh, from sharing a taxi with people. So plan today is to do a bit of boxing, do a bit of boxing, and then have a bit of a stretch. I haven't had brekkie yet, I need to have breakfast. And then I need to work today. I don't have any calls lined up today, which is always worrying if you don't have Oh no, sorry, I do have one call. I thought I'd call booked at 12 with a potential American client, actually. But I did read yesterday as well. This is when I feel bad, is when I didn't, I was around 9.30, 10, I was absolutely wrecked. And I probably should have just pulled out my $100 million leads, Alex Hormozzi. Should have just read a chapter, but I was just head hit the pillow. And that's what you want, actually. You're so exhausted that you just head hits the pillow. And then you'll sleep. You're not, and I slept straight through. Got my solid eight hours. Although I don't actually know what you should read. I mean, eight hours is good, but I hear so many different podcasts. And I've read so many books that some say six hours, some say eight. Some say you should have naps throughout the day. Some say have one nap a day, less than 20 minutes. Who knows? I sometimes like the rain. It's quite romantic. It's quite nice. Good thing is, this is the biggest difference between rain and... In... Shanghai and rain in the UK is the rain in Shanghai is it's is not as cold so in the UK usually has a bit of a chill to it it's a bit chilly but here at least you can get away with it and in England I think it's the culprit for a lot of sickness that people go out it's raining they forget their umbrella But here, it's okay to deal with. The weather's getting a lot better now in Shanghai, which is good. April is the best month to come to Shanghai because it's not really humid and muggy. It's actually a nice weather. If you want a bit of a tan, you might still get a nice tan. It's honestly the best time to come here, to move here. Prices right now for rents in Shanghai are pretty good, whether it be renting an office or um, apartments for renting is very, very affordable right now. It's been a bit of a drop in the market. So if you're looking to come to the old Shangers, Shanghai, it's a good time to come. So to, 
today I've got an event actually tonight. A really good little event. New faces. You always want to go to events sometimes with, 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 always sometimes. You want to go to events with new faces, new value, new people. If you see the same faces sometimes it gets a bit laborious, a bit, especially if you've never done anything with them business wise. Because sometimes, a lot of time when you go into network events, I do go with the semi-intention, semi-intention of, you know, if there's a business deal here, great, but you're also going there to make friends, learn something new, connect to people yourself. This event I'm going to tonight is actually, it's an offline event, a good friend of mine is speaking at the event, and, um, yeah, it's probably going to be around 30 people, this will be intimate, but learn something new. And that's the other thing about going to events, guys. A lot of people just go to an event and they just go by themselves. I always said this to people that I meet, my team, is when you go to an event, invite people. Go along with your network. Because when there's that networking part after the speeches, or you can connect people and say, hey, I know this, people, this person, connect you with this person. A lot of people think it of it very linear, just... I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna connect with a load of people on WeChat, get a load of WeChats, WeChat farm, and not actually deliver anything. But the key is to go to these events and actually bring people along, see how you can connect people. If there's an opportunity there, whether it be a business deal or a potential client, yeah, great, but I think the it should be a very holistic approach where you're trying to connect people together that's the whole point of an event and 99% of people miss that they go to an event thing I'm gonna get I'm gonna be selfish I'm gonna get this this value out of this and um, yeah me 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 <laughs> There you go, that, that might be the thumbnail. <laughs> I'm putting a lot more effort with these videos into the actual speaking content and the, the topics I want to speak about. Thumbnails, things like that will come later. You can see how much it's raining though, look at that. The rain coming down the window. So right now we're in a uh, this area, actually, in history, this used to be a bit of a British area. I used to live here, actually, a few years ago, in Dashujie, around this area. And I was just saying, I'm, I'm the final Brit left in Dashujie. I never met any other British foreigners living in this area. Most of the foreigners live around um, Jing'an, Shanxi Nanlu, um, Xuhui, Zhongshan Gongyuan, Zhongshan Park. They all live in those, those kind of four key areas is where all the foreigners are. So I used to live in Jing'an actually when I first came to Shanghai. shot of the skyline there. We're flying now on the motorway. So, yeah. It's got to be a lot of time management today, getting stuff done, making sure that we keep on track with our goals. Tonight's going to be a late one, I can tell. And that's the other thing about going to an event, guys. Is a lot of people don't think about this. Is plug the event. Tell people you're going. Hey, I'm going to this event. Take two or three friends along. Especially if you're someone that's a bit shy and not, you know, you're still honing your networking skills. Is take two or three friends along. 
And the event I'm going to tonight, I've already invited most of my network. Um, I think four or five have said, yeah, I'm going. So let's say one or two of those are gonna drop off, so maybe three will go. Now, if you're a person that's known for bringing people to events, that's exponential value. And it's something that I worked out in the last few years is always tell people that you're going to these events. It's a, it's a key, key thing. You know, build that reputation. Ooh, Daniel's going to that event. I want to go as well. <laughs> I'm really enjoying doing these vlogs because I can really stream of consciousness, talk about different topics and and give value to anyone watching this. I did get my first message three days in from someone saying, hey, I've really found this vlog valuable for my life. Thank you so much. Once you get start getting those kind of messages, it's all worth it. Because that's honestly one of the number one reasons I do video content is, is to give value, to help people. That's probably one of the reasons. It should be for selfless reasons although there is some selfishness involved like you're building a profile and you want as many people to follow you and like and all this kind of stuff but i think that is probably one of the meanings of life is helping people right it is to give back and the meaning of life is also you've got one life, so make the most of it. So we've got a few minutes left, guys. A few minutes left. I'm probably not going to film outside. I thought I'd just try this today. Try a, a Didi, try a taxi uh, a vlog, see how this goes. We've covered quite a lot. Stuff is going to change your life. Yeah, you've got to get that fitness in, you've got to get that gym session in, yoga, whatever you do, get some stretching in every day. Have the odd rest day here and there, let the muscles recover. It's very, very important. And... Live life to the full. Work hard, play hard. Rain is always an interesting one as well because it, it really does affect people's moods. It's a good weather system to to throw a spanner in the works, right? Change the environment, change the circumstances, change your surroundings. It, it does make you, it forces you to adapt, right? Which I really like about rain. And that's why British love rain. <laughs> yeah. You have to deal with it, right? You have to deal with... Oh, we've booked... You know, we, we've planned a picnic today outside. Let's still have this picnic. It's raining. <laughs> it's probably a bit shaky. It's probably a bit like... Ugh. Do my best. It's a work in progress. Anyway, one and all, I hope you're enjoying this content. I hope you're finding it valuable. It's a lot of advice, a lot of sprouting off information. Some useful, not so, some not so useful. And I really hope you guys get a lot of value out of this. Follow, like, Drop a comment below, drop a question below. I'll always answer. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Make the most of it. Jia yo is the same Chinese, add oil. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. <laughs>